We live in a world that's pretty broken. And it doesn't take a lot of convincing of people to, to understand this either. You turn on the news, you can see all kinds of evil and hardship in the world. But most people try whatever they can to escape it. Some people, through jobs, they go headlong into work. Some people, relationships. Some people get hung up in addictions. Other people might even go the route of, if I can be religious enough, I can escape the brokenness and the evil of this world. But the reality is, is all of these things are insufficient to be able to take us out of it. In reality, they're like bungee cords that will just snap us right back down into the brokenness where we came from. But here's the good news. God, in his original design, did not desire for us to live in this place. When he created man, he created them to experience, enjoy, and display his love and glory. But here's the thing about love. True love can't be forced. In order for a real relationship of love to exist, that means that I have to have the decision to love back, and I'm not forced in that. So if it's a decision to love back, to truly experience, enjoy, and display his love and glory, then that means there's also a choice that I can make not to do so. And we know through scripture that the very first humans that God created, Adam and Eve, that when given this choice, they chose to disobey. And what we know of, of disobedience is that another word for that is sin in scripture. And it says that this sin is anything against God's glory, his perfect holiness. And here's the problem with that. It says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God that we were supposed to experience, enjoy, and display. That perfect, holy glory, right? And all have fallen short of that because we all have sin. And that sin casts us into this world of brokenness that we live in. Now, you might as well look at that as a wall that cannot be climbed over, cannot be gone around. It is a one-way street that leads us away from this world that God created us for into the brokenness that we're in. But again, God, he has a desire for us not to remain in this. For even though scripture says that the punishment of this sin is death, which is, is felt now, but is, is an eternal separation from him, uh, he made a way out. For the wages or payment of, of that sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And that's where this third circle comes into play. Now, how do we get from this to this? Well, we know about Jesus that he came, this was God who came into the world and he lived that perfect life that we were supposed to live. And then he died the death that we were supposed to die. That he, even though he was perfect and spotless and without sin, he died in our place to pay the penalty of this sin to keep us from having to stay in the separation from him. And then the scripture says that three days later, he was raised from the dead, conquering sin and conquering death in the grave. So Jesus made a comment saying that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man gets to the Father except through me. But how do we do that? In scripture, it says that if we turn and trust in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. What am I turning from? I'm turning from a life of living things my own way. I'm turning from a life of sin. I'm turning from trying to do things in my own strength, trying to escape this and the penalty of sin in my own ways. I have to turn from those, repent, confess of the sin in my life and trust in Jesus as the Lord, got a little crown going on there, a Lord and Savior of my life because he saved me from that. And so I submit to him as the Lord over my giving it to him. And it says that they, he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through him. So when we turn and trust in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are restored back into this relationship that he had intended for us all along. And that is great news.